So I want to talk about something that really demonstrates how far we've fallen in terms of democracy, because we have two billionaires, not one, but two billionaires running in the Democratic Party primary to win the nomination to compete against our billionaire president. Like, we need to really not let that fact get lost on us because this is horrible for democracy. And we know that the strategy of individuals like Tom Steyer and Michael Bloomberg is to overwhelm the airwaves with ads, right? Spend lots and lots of money so that way you boost your name recognition and you make yourself seem more viable and electable and you get your message out there. You overwhelm people. Now, to the degree that that actually will be effective, it's up in the air because currently in New Hampshire, I just talked about how Tom Steyer's ads have been running so frequently that they are literally irritating people in New Hampshire. They have them memorized. But with that being said, Mike Bloomberg, I don't necessarily know if his strategy will be more conducive to success. But when you look at aggregate polling data from Real Clear Politics, he's polling at 5%. He surpassed Andrew Yang. He is just behind Pete Buttigieg. So whatever he's doing, it's working out fairly well, right? At least nationally. Now, he's not going to compete in early primary states like Iowa and New Hampshire, but nationally, he is seeing some success. Now, the question is, how much money is he spending? We know he's trying to buy the election, but how much money is he putting into this? CNN's David Wright breaks it down. Michael Bloomberg has crossed the $100 million mark on TV advertising, according to data from Kantar Media. Bloomberg is spending $20.4 million on TV ads this week, with $17.4 million booked for next week. His total spend now at $100.6 million across just five weeks of advertising. Now, how does that stack when compared with the other candidates? Well, TV ad spend by 2020 Dems through the week of 1217. Bloomberg, $100.6 million. Steyer, $81.2 million. And then in third is Bernie Sanders with 8.6 million. So let's just pause for a second and we'll, we'll get back to that tweet. But billionaires are spending upwards of $80 million. And then the next person in the race is spending $8 million. That discrepancy there is huge. Their message is getting out simply because they have more money. And it's getting out more than everyone else because they have money. As much as I loathe Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg, at least they're trying to compete in a genuine democratic way, right? They're still corrupt. They're taking money from billionaires, but they're not just outright buying this election or trying to buy this election. 100 million, 81 million to 8 million. This should not be legal. We cannot have a functioning democracy if people are able to do this, if they can just effectively buy name recognition. Now back to that tweet. So we have Bernie with 8.6 million. Next is Buttigieg with 7.2 million. Yang with 4.7 million. Biden with 2.2 million. Warren with 1.9 million. Klobuchar with 1.8 million. Bennett with 1.1 million. And Gabbard with 1 million. Now, on top of that, we have people spending less than $1 million, and that includes Delaney with $662,000, also trying to buy this election, but, you know, he's not a billionaire, he's a multimillionaire, so he hasn't had much success there. We have Castro with $49,000, Williamson with $972, and then Booker and Duvall Patrick with $0.00. And even super PACs are being outspent by billionaires. We have Unite the Country for Biden spending 624000 And United We Win with Booker spending $200,000. So even the super PACs with dark money are not able to keep up with billionaires and how much money they are flooding into this race. And Mike Bloomberg is someone who doesn't even have real ideas. He's not running on any specific policy, neither is Tom Steyer. His entire thing is being against Donald Trump, right? And saying, I support term limits, but that's not actually a policy proposal. I support term limits too. But if you're not opting for structural reform and policies that impact working people, then it shows that you can't represent them because you're out of touch and you don't know what they need. And billionaires, of course, are out of touch. Now, Mike Bloomberg is even worse than Tom Steyer because he has 
no message whatsoever other than I'm a centrist and since Joe Biden is failing, let me be the Democratic Party's new savior. Now, of course, that's not what he's saying explicitly, but of course, that is his intention and that is the message that the mainstream media is um, is promoting. And let's not discount how they're part of the problem. On top of what he's already spending, he's getting free advertising. Mike Bloomberg, as well as Tom Steyer, they're getting free advertising because the media takes them seriously because they're billionaires. It was the same thing with Howard Schultz. CNN gave him his own town hall before he even announced that he'd be running. And it turns out he's not going to run. But they gave him his own town hall. We take people who have a lot of money seriously because in a capitalist system, money equals power. And it's disgusting. If you want to live in a democracy, then you have to push back against this because this is antithetical to democracy. So I, I don't really have much commentary here because I think that this speaks for itself. The fact, the the numbers, it just it says everything you need to know. Billionaires are spending far more than all the other candidates combined. And it's absolutely unacceptable. This should be illegal. Beta. Apple mail, not a beta mail.